I'm Sarah Turner, I'm a freelance medical copywriter, and today I wanna to talk to you about something that I think gets looked over a lot, and that is external factors that affect your copywriting. So I'm gonna start off with some of the more obvious ones. I think you can probably guess the first few, but these are the six things I think are really, really important. The first one is the time of day. So everyone has a time of day where they are more productive. And when you're working for yourself, you get to take advantage of that. So don't work nine to five if that doesn't work for you. For me, I am much more productive early in the morning. So I actually get up earlier and get my work done so I can have nice long afternoons to do whatever I want with. Um, and so you might be one of those people who works well late at night. I like more power to you. I cannot work late at night, but if you can, you know, make sure you rearrange and reschedule your day to fit what works best for you. And then the thing I want to encourage you to do is to take the very most productive hour of your day and actually devote it to you and your business. So instead of jumping right into work with whatever hour is like your best, don't. Instead, work on growing your business, whether that's client outreach or, you know, learning a new skill, reading a copywriting book, practicing copy, whatever it is, take that very most productive hour and dedicate it to growing you and your business because that is how you're going to have a lifelong business in freelance copywriting. So time of day is a good one. The next one are audio um, distractions or what you choose to do with audio. So I actually like to switch it up. Sometimes I listen to music. I can only listen to music without words. I really love um, like epic music playlists. Uh, they have like movie soundtracks on YouTube, which are can get you super amped and make it so that you're feeling like you're a gladiator or something. So if I'm having a day where I'm really struggling to get through like the work I need to get through, I'll put on some epic movie music, which you can find on YouTube through typing like literally epic movie music. I also like to listen to some lo-fi hip hop, which is really chill and doesn't have words. Also, you can find that on YouTube or Spotify. But sometimes I find that I work really well with absolutely no noise at all. And so what I do for that is I actually put in earplugs um, or just sometimes my AirPods or earpods or something that kind of drowns out the rest of the sound. I actually also have some, you know, over the ear headphones. Those work really well too. But another thing about like what is could be affecting you externally as far as audio goes are notifications. I recommend so strongly that you turn all notifications off on your phone. And I don't just mean when you're working, but maybe that's a little bit of a stretch trying to get you to do it. But when I turned my phone to always silent or vibrate, it changed my life. The number of like dings and bings and whatever that would go off on my phone are super, super distracting. And so I really want to encourage you to do it. I've gotten a lot of my students to do it and they've been amazed at how you know, there are just so many fewer distractions when you turn your phone either on silent or on vibrate only. And when I'm actually working, I turn it on do not disturb so even vibrations can't come through. The third one is visual. Again, this is probably one of the ones you guessed, but it's just making sure that you have a really beautiful space that you're working in visually. So I don't just mean like eliminating or reducing visual distractions. I mean actually making it tidy. Having a tidy space works wonder for distractions. Um, so I really recommend, you know, working with working on that and making sure it's somewhere that you really enjoy to work. Like I love creating a really beautiful space for me to work in with lots of plants. You can check it out. This is actually my office. Um, so yeah, so making it so, like something that is aesthetically pleasing is something that it will just do wonders for your productivity. So really take the time to make your workspace something enjoyable. Um, the other thing is, is, the fourth thing is, is movement and distractions. So if you're the kind of person who gets distracted by looking out the window and you can see people like walking by on the streets, I mean, you might want to not, you might not want to face the window, even though it's nicer. Um, you also, obviously it's can be hard, you know, when you have kids, but Having kids running around makes it really difficult. And so sometimes I, you know, I think it's really beneficial to consider having a co-working space 
which are awesome little spaces where people can just rent time. It's kind of like a coffee shop, except for you don't feel guilty the whole time and feel like you have to constantly be buying coffee. Um, so that's another one is considering all the movement in your life and distractions. Again, that goes back to the notifications on your phone. I also turned off all the little numbers on my email and the little red dots um, on all my apps. So none of my apps have any notifications. Um, I, I think except for phone calls. Um, so, so I know if I have a missed call. But that that does wonders for not pulling you out of your work. Another thing I want to recommend here for distractions is an app I love called Self Control. And it's something that you can set up on your computer. You just go to Self Control, Google it. I think it's selfcontrolmaybe.com or .org. And you can put in websites that you typically tend to go to without thinking about it, like Facebook or Instagram. And you can actually make it set a timer so that you can't visit it for one hour or two hours, however long you need to really hammer out some work. So that's another one. <clears throat> These last two I think are probably gonna, you know, surprise you a little. The, the fifth one is novelty. Our brain loves novel experiences. So I have found that I can get a lot more work done when I actually switch up my environment a little bit. So that means going to a coffee shop, going to a <clears throat> co-working space, working from home sometimes. I've started working with friends where we actually meet up at each other's houses, um, which is so nice because when you have somebody who helps, who's sitting there with you, it keeps you accountable. You know, you're less likely to check your phone or get up and just like eat things. I don't know, that's what I do when I work from home. Sometimes I'm just like shoveling food in my face. Um, so novelty, like take the time to switch up where you're working so that it will just re-energize your brain. It's, it's really incredible how much that small change can actually help. And then the last one, the sixth one, is super important and not talked about enough, and that is how you feel about your work. That is a major external factor that influences your productivity as a copywriter. And it's why I harp on this so much, but it's because it's so important and not enough people are talking about it. If you are a freelancer or you know a copywriting business owner, you get to choose who you work with. You are not, you are not at the mercy of Upwork or job boards, um, maybe a little bit when you first get started, but as you continue to grow your business, you get to choose who you work for. And so how you feel about the work that you're doing is going to be huge for your productivity. I remember one time when I was writing for a client way early on where I just needed the money and I did not agree with what he was saying, what he was selling, but I was like, oh, but I really need the money. And so I took the job and I was writing for him and I realized that it caused me because I was feeling so like, not great about the work I was doing. It's I started procrastinating and it spilled over into all my other projects. So I was, you know, really ha struggling to meet deadlines in a way that I kind of really hadn't experienced before. And I was like, I took a step back and was like, what is going on? And I realized it's because I didn't want to write for this guy because I just didn't agree with him. And I didn't want to write things that I, you know, I didn't want to spread things that I didn't think were valuable for people helping them and improving their lives. So I was like, you know what, this isn't worth the money. And I, and I told them that I couldn't work for them and let them go as a client. And I didn't realize at the time that that was what was making me procrastinate across the board. So again, I had no idea that's what was happening fully until I let that client go I had a huge weight lifted off my shoulders and I was able to get back into it and crank out work and feel better about myself you know I was able to get up in the morning and feel really good about the work I was doing so don't you know don't not pay attention to these things these are really important for you know your productivity especially as somebody who works from home or works for yourself you got to pay attention to these things because these are the things that are gonna make a day easier and it's gonna give you more clarity because you'll know what you're doing and feel good about it. And so, I don't know, I just think so many people overlook these things. 
Um, I, and also really taking the time to just focus on one thing at a time. So I hope this helps. If you like that, go ahead and hit that thumbs up button. Remember to subscribe. And of course, please leave me comments. I love reading them and I love getting ideas about things you guys want to hear about. Thanks so much.